We continue our lesson one discussion with credit card finance charges. Now on a credit card, which most college students have and almost every adult has, there's a grace period on credit cards. And the credit card company does not assess a finance charge as long as by some due date, the full payment has been received. So you make all your payments, you buy things on your credit card, and then there's a grace period once a calendar window is closed that you can pay that off in full. And if you don't, they assess a finance charge. And they do this by um, computing the average daily balance and using that in lieu of the principal in a simple interest computation. So the finance charge is really just a simple interest computation on your average daily balance. Now what's an average daily balance? If I were to ask you what the average of a test, of a test grade was for your class, you would take everyone's test grade, add them up, and divide by the number of test takers. Well, What we're going to do is we're going to look at the balance each and every day see what the running balance is, then we're going to average that balance over the window of time. I think it's pretty straightforward. Let's look at an example. The example that we're going to look at is concerning Jason's Lowe's Visa card. Take just a few moments and read through that on your own. Alright, Jason's Lowe's visa starts the billing cycle on May 14th and ends on June 14th. He starts the cycle with $2,312.45 as balance. He carries that balance for seven days before making a purchase of tools of $233.90. After 10 days, he then makes a payment of $1,500. After six more days, he then makes a faucet purchase of $99.97. He has no more activity for the rest of the billing cycle. Find the average daily balance that Jason has on his card. Part B, if the interest rate on the card is 15.99%, find his finance charge that month. Now, here's what we're going to do. I find it very useful to be able to just drop blocks of text into Microsoft Excel. I've loaded this in the Adobe Acrobat Reader, but most PDF viewers have something like this. This is the, uh, the click and select area for snapshots. Um, you may have to pilfer through some of the settings. For me, it was under Edit. Take Snapshot. Pops it up there. When you click on it, it changes your cursor to um, the bullseye. Then basically, you can just select and highlight this space. It copies it to uh, the computer clipboard. And then very literally, I can just paste it in. I've got my uh, Microsoft Excel window zoomed in. But I know from practice that it's got to be between G and H for it to view well. So let's start going through this. Now here are some things that we want to do. Microsoft Excel is pretty smart so let's look at the dates. We want to compute um, any charges and any payments so I'm going to make some columns here for charges and payments and then I'm going to look at the balance so we can uh, really keep this going on. Now we start, we start this um, with a $2,312.45 balance. So let's put the dollar sign in, 231245. It recognizes that it's a dollar, that's fantastic. It starts on May the 14th. Um, he carries that balance for seven days, so we know that this starts on May 14th. Look, notice that the computer automatically uh, readjusts the date. He has no charges, he has no payments pretty wonderful setup. Now we know that it runs through June the 14th. So if you remember how we did this, this is going to be viewed as a formula automatically. So we select that cell, we move our little white plus into the middle, and as we move it back to the back right hand corner, lower right hand corner becomes the black plus. We want to take it all the way to June the 14th, and if you can see, it is showing up as a little cursor. June the 14th. Alright, there it is. We've got all of our dates in hand. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see just a few more of these and optimize that width. 
Yeah, he carries this balance for um, for quite a few days. We see that he carries it for seven days. So he has a balance looks like 2,312.45 for quite a while. Now this is really neat. I'm going to build a formula in my second row. And you may have to do this in your first row, depending on if, he op if you open the month for the charge or payment. Well, this balance is 0, 0. But I'm going to say this is equal to the previous balance plus any charges less any payments. Okay, we know that he has a balance of zero dollars for those first seven days. Uh, he, he makes no charges and no payments on those first seven days. So for these first seven days, really easy to see here. There's zero dollars. From here, I can just drag my formula down. Pretty straightforward. All right. Well, then he makes a purchase of 233.90, and that lasts for 10 days. But what we see is that um, after that purchase, he makes no more purchases. So May 21st, he makes zero purchases. And uh, we can actually highlight this down. So that's one, two, three days, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So that's all 10 days. And now we can drag and drop the formula through here and see that the balance has been adjusted by that 233.90. And uh, just for the sake of argument, we're going to format all of these as currency. Okay. Here's where I'm going to introduce another tool to you under the view heading. It's the split. If I click there, it places a split wherever I want it to go. I can drag and drop it. And I'm going to go down to uh, in my marker here where I've got May 31st. So after 10 days, he then makes a purchase. So we've gone through those 10 days. Now he makes a purchase. He makes a payment of $1,500. So there's a $0 payment, but he makes a $1,500. There's a $0 purchase, but there's a $1,500 payment. Great after six days, so we've got six days that this is the case. So we have one, two, three days of no purchases, four, five, six days of no purchases. Here's a zero dollar, and then let's get through the same number of days. Our formula now can be dragged, so we can see that the balance has been adjusted by this many days. All right. Well now, after those six days, he makes a faucet purchase of $99.97. So he's made that, but he's made no payments. He makes no more purchases for the rest of the billing cycle. So basically throughout the window of time, he has $0 and $0 of payments. His balance is reflected with that $99.97 balance. So what we have done is we've constructed a day-by-day -day system of doing this. Now you can feel free to go through and pause this video and go back. I'm going to remove the split now, and so you can see what's happened. Each and every day I have, I have examined his running balance. When he makes a purchase, his balance goes up. When he makes a payment, his balance goes down. When he makes a, uh, a purchase, his balance goes up. This is just how it works. Well now, what I need to do is I need to find the average daily balance on his card. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to I'm going to make a little bubble here and do the ADB. Now, built into Microsoft Excel um, is a function that's for the average. So I'm going to click up here on f of x, and I'm going to type average. I'm going to click on go, and lo and behold, there's the average function. Here's the window of time. Well, I'm going to select my window of time, my number of payments, and now it goes from D17 to D48 in my spreadsheet. You can see that I selected them with the pointer, just dragging and dropping, and they show up here in the window, and I get a balance. So I hit OK. Well, my average daily balance is in dollars and cents. It should be. It's an average daily balance. Now for part B, I want to find the finance charge. 
but there are some things I need to know. I need to count the number of dates, okay? That's pretty, pretty important, because I need to know time, and I need to know the interest rate. Well, I know the interest rate. It's 15.99%, which we can type as 15.99%. Microsoft Excel gets it. What I don't know is how much time is involved. Well, I've got days to count here, and it goes from May the 14th to June the 14th. So it's pretty clearly not just like 30 days. So what we're going to do is we're going to inject another function here, which is the count function. Now, the count function does exactly the same. It's going to count the number of cells that I'm selecting. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on D17, just like I did before, and I'm going to drag and highlight all the way down here. Well, I've highlighted this, and I have D17 to D48, that's right. And okay, I've got 32 days. The only problem with this is, folks, that simple interest or any interest computation must happen not with days, but in terms of a year. Now, remember how we talked about this. If you divide by 365, that makes the fractional value for time smaller, and the banks don't want to do this. So what the bank is going to do is they're going to take 32 and they're going to divide by 360. Now that's nice and evenly divisible. Um, that's nice and evenly divisible for um, 30 calendar month days, 30 day, 30 day months rather. Um, but we've got 32 days. So we divide by 360 and we get this value. But what dividing by 360 also goes to do is it goes to maximize a time fraction. So it makes the window time look larger. So the average daily balance is really just a sim um, excuse me, the finance charge is really just a simple interest computation where it's not principal times rate times time, it's average daily balance times rate times my time in years. So I click on that, so it's ADB times rate times time. Now I get a finance charge of $25.87. So if Jason doesn't pay off his Lowe's credit card in the allotted amount of time, he has to pay $25.87. A lot of times you think of this as the minimum payment. So we have answered both parts A and B of that problem. We have one final example to go in our lesson in our lesson one discussion. It's known as it's our example four. Let me give you just a few moments to read that. A student has a savings account earning nine percent annual simple interest. She must pay $1,500 for first semester tuition by September 1 and $1,500 for the second semester tuition by January 1. How much must she earn in the summer, i.e. by September 1st, in order to pay the first semester bill on time and still have the remainder of her summer earnings grow to $1,500 between September 1st and January 1st? We're going to use our little highlighting trick again. We're going to come back over to our spreadsheet and put that in a new sheet. I'm going to paste it, shrink it down to the right window of size, and then zoom my Excel spreadsheet to about 150%. So the issue is she does not have to have $3,000 on September 1. She can have less than that. She needs $1,500 for, sep for September 1, but she needs to have some amount that grows to $1,500 by January 1st. Let's talk about how to do this. So let's first off lay out you know, the things that we know. She has a 9% simple interest rate. Okay. Now as far as time goes, she's got all of September, October, November, and December for some money to grow like to, to a future value, a present value to grow to a future value. So she's got four months. So the way that we write this is 4 divided by 12. because She has 4 months divided by 12 months. That converts it to an average of a year. And what we know is that her future value must, in fact, be $1,500. Now, this is really the um, second semester tuition 
problem. So we're going to examine it first. So we know that's our future value. Now remember, we know that future value is principal times 1 times parenthesis 1 plus rate times time. Now this means in practice that the present value is really the future value divided by the entire value 1 plus rate times time. So let's go through and do this. I'm going to compute 1 plus r times t. I'm going to let Microsoft Excel kind of act as the parenthesis. So I'm going to use equal sign to create a, uh, a mathematical expression. I'm going to do 1 plus my rate, asterisk is my multiplier, times my time. Well, Microsoft Excel found an error in my formula. What do I want to do? Well, my formula error is that I had a parenthesis. Let's get rid of the extra parenthesis. Remember, I'm going to let Excel be my own parenthesis. This particular cell is the parenthesis. Well, I know my future value is $1,500. So the present value can be computed pretty easily. It's equal to my future value, $1,500, divided by 1 plus R times T. So that means that this student needs $1,456.31 in the bank on September 1 when she stops working, and that can grow at this 9% rate to $1,500 in time to pay for the January tuition. Now, the question isn't asking that. The question is asking how much must she have in order to pay both bills on time. Well, remember the first semester tuition, she better have $1,500. So what does she need total? She needs the $1,500 for the fall semester plus the $1,456.31 for the spring semester. Grand total, she needs $2,956.31 in order to pay for both. That is smart use of money.